good afternoon to one and all i am sudeep pal desai here project officer from goa state innovation council uh, welcome uh, to our today's session on additive manufacturing for innovative product development using 3d printing so the objective of today's session is to equip the students startup founders and faculty with the necessary understanding and knowledge on roles of additive manufacturing in building innovative products the session will also provide hands on studies on various case studies under additive manufacturing so for today's session we have mr ryan walls okay ryan walls is very passionate about innovation and developing new products and solutions ryan comes with immense experience in mechanical and industrial engineering metal fabrication and 3d printing industries ryan is one of the pioneers in the field of 3d printing in goa and has been working in spreading awareness primarily in the in the domain of education real estate and manufacturing sectors ryan we welcome you all right good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, thank you sudeep for your introduction and uh, you know welcoming me onto the onto the uh, onto the forum uh, before before we begin i'd like to just really understand uh, who is it uh, that uh, um, what kind of people are attending this webinar Uh, can you please type on the chat? Uh, what is your occupation? What do you do? Are you a student? Are you a teacher? Are you business? Are you in business? Uh, what is it that? Can you please uh, type on the screen? Let me just see whether I can. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we have a teacher. Thank you, Sanya. Sanya. Thank you, Sanya. You are very quick. Shri, Mr. Sri Krishna, you are the headmaster. Nice. Very nice. student rajesh rohit science teacher joe dominic thank you very much for responding thank you rajuta you are a teacher thank you for for responding anyone into business here our teacher nivan divyata all right there is a project head so a lot of you are from the academia a lot of you from the academia right uh, very few from the business side all right so i think um, and yeah i think my presentation is for both for innovative product development as well as for the business business side of it and uh, what i've tried to do the, rather the motive of behind my entire thing is to excite you to try and use 3d printing uh, to create new products to explore new boundaries okay and i hope you will be able to do this uh by the end of this session i've got about 45 minutes is that right uh, sudeep we've got about 45 minutes yeah. with you and then i will do and through it only with stories stories about what we have done and how we have done it and i hope this is going to really inspire you to do uh, to do it yourself um additive 3d printing at the onset i would say is not really something uh, uh, some rocket science or some great Just a tool, uh, a tool, just like a CNC machine, just like a laser cutter, just like your screwdriver. It is a tool that needs to be used efficiently and used properly for you to make things or make life easy for you. Yes, what we can ad admit is that 3D printing is one of the most easiest tools available. It is one of the most accessible tools available, and uh, you can do very complicated stuff using your 3D printer. and that makes things so much easier and interesting uh, i'd like to share with you what we've been doing in this last 6 uh, months during the lockdown when the entire country was in a lockdown we actually got special permissions and started making face shields using 3d printing and laser cutting for uh, doctors and nurses when the entire supply chain had collapsed so we made uh, three of these uh, we actually made four models but these three models were the one that were running around uh, that were uh, being used around it we made about 4000 face shields and we gave out uh, 3000 were free and uh, around 1000 of them were sold uh, we also made something called as an intubation box this is an intubation box when a doctor is putting a pipe into the person's throat Uh, that pipe the process is called intubation and when he does the process the patient tends to cough and leaves out a lot of spit and uh, blood into the air now to avoid the blood and spit falling onto the patient's face they wanted a covering 
uh, a face mask does not really help. So we made this kind of a box where the doctor stands behind, puts her hands in the gloves and uh, does the process of intubation. Similarly, the Navy asked us uh, you know, to create something called as a transport pod. In case there is a, a patient that needs to be taken from one place to the other and um, you know, they do not want the risk of someone else getting infected or the driver or maybe the pilot getting infected. And so they asked us to develop this board. Now this, uh, the shell has been done by the Navy themselves and uh, where we did concept, but why, where they were stuck on was this. And it looks like a simple plastic thing, but it required a lot of thinking on how to solve this, sort this out. And uh, why the, the solution that we finally gave them was so airtight that uh, smoke did not come out of it. This was the smoke test that is going on. And then finally, we came this came out with Lobo as a product. The Lobo is a uh, sensor based uh, sanit uh, thing, sanitizer dispenser, and uh, this has been doing very well in the market in the last two months since we launched it. And we are having good fun uh, marketing it and learning new uh, new things in this entire process. Coming back to three D printing, what is three D printing, and how can it help you? All these products that were developed, somewhere or, another, or the other, we use printing to come up with these products. Somewhere or another, this 3D printing helped us build this uh, product range for us. And not just us, this is a product we have ourselves. But in this, um, this uh, uh, six months, there were a number of people who came to us saying that we want to develop new products. We want to develop uh, new items. And we were helping them with it. Let me uh, take you through a small journey of what 3D printing is. Uh, if you see uh, in your gallery, if you look at the gallery view, one of the videos is also showing uh, one of my printers printing a pot. It's a self-watering pot and you can see it live. Uh, that's a, it is being printed on an Ender 3 using uh, PLA material, that is polylactic acid. Let me... How do we... Yes, so let me just show you a small video that will explain to you the 3D printing process uh, for, for those who do not know. Now the Eiffel Tower over here has been printed on this machine. Uh, the machine starts basically nothing and that is why it is called an additive manufacturing process. There are two ways that you manufacture. One is you add, one is you uh, In a normally carving process, you take a block of wood and then start chipping off. But in uh, additive manufacturing, you start with zero. And here the plastic uh, goes right on top and then comes down, melts through the nozzle and is poured out in a very precise form to create any product that you want. And that is the beauty of 3D printing. Because uh, because that uh, it is, uh, sorry, uh, because it is additive, it can make complex structures. It does not care uh, how complex your part is. It can just print. Of course, there are certain rules that you have to follow for 3D printing. Uh, if you follow those rules, uh, you are able to do some amazing stuff uh, using 3D printing. So let me go very quickly with this because we have very less time. Um, so what it does is basically prints layer and then it created this. This is now it is printing the third layer. And progressively layer upon layer, it keeps printing till you get something like this. As you can see, it has started lifting up and creating, uh, creating an object. What it is creating here is bird inside a cage, and this is possible uh, only in a in a technology like this, uh, only an additive manufacturing technology like this. And it is creating a bird inside a cage in a single piece. Any other technology, you will probably have to do it in two different pieces and then join them together. And that is where three D printing has an edge over all other technologies. So how does the 3D printing process work? It starts with an idea. You take an idea and um, a lot of us keep getting ideas, but we don't do anything. And these ideas come the strangest of moments. When we are walking on the beach, we are sitting in the washroom, we are having bath, when you are cooking, and then when you get a, uh, an idea. And you never know, that idea could be one of the best. However, um, because of the constraint of how are we are going to manufacture, where are we going to manufacture, you get to make use of this idea. I would strongly recommend that if you have an idea, start either jotting it down 
or if you know uh, designing then go to the next stage and start designing and making your idea real because a lot of good ideas die in our brains itself uh, i would love if uh, a lot more people started uh, paying more attention to their ideas so you feel have come you start with an idea you then create a design of it uh, then there is a small process of analysis to check whether the uh, design is good whether it is printable whether it is workable uh, you might want to do your design tests okay and then you go through a slicing software uh, 3d printer does not understand what you design all it understands is a series of codes which says go here pour this much plastic go there pour that much plastic um, to translate your design some a software called as a slicer which i didn't which understands your and then converts it into codes okay and then it start for then you go to 3d printing 3d printing basically reduces the gap between an idea and reality many times we have that idea but we don't see it make it so three, through 3d printing you can actually reduce that gap uh, in a very short while you can make uh, a part a prototype and test whether your idea is good or not and that is really uh, that really is a surreal feeling during this covid period that these are all taken just from different uh, websites and these are things that 3d printing has done uh, during the covid and during the covid the lockdown 3d printing the world over became a hero uh, they made face shields they made face mask they made this um, clips so that you could uh, put your mask comfortably this is a different mask or most of these items we already tried ourselves and we uh, we were working on this but they were not so for various reasons we did not work uh, work deep on it but we did try all this stuff uh, 3d printing also has made things like this so the, uh, this is the covid key basically you use the covid key not to, to not thing uh, you can carry your bags in it you can open doors with it you can uh, touch your uh, buttons the atm buttons or the lift buttons using the covid key uh, this is so that you don't touch your hand to the lock or to the latch this is to remove gloves recently i read an article uh, that said that uh, of people and doctors were, uh, were infected uh, not during um, during the process of treating the patients but when they were actually remove, removing the gloves because they did not know the, how to remove the gloves properly and then if when there was virus on the gloves it, it would touch them and that was very sad because after they finish an entire day when they are barely pulling off the gloves that is where they get infected so 3d printing tools like this help you uh, help them remove gloves and then doors to open and close doors you have now a foot puller this is called a foot puller that has been 3d printed and then fixed to the uh, edge of your door so you don't use your hand but actually use your shoes or your legs to open and close a door and now th this is just a few examples that i was able to pull out uh, and uh, to show you uh, because then i would have a few uh, slides only on this but uh, this is basically telling you what 3d printing can do mind uh, towards what you can do using the same technology to make things and life easier for you uh, any technology that makes life easy is what uh, makes it valuable and 3d printing can do it however a lot of us are not able to connect ki how this can actually happen for us here are some of the stuff that we did uh, in our office this is uh, this is a very old project almost about 5 years back wherein um, a company wanted to create a modular uh, bracket system to hold pipes and they did not want uh, and this thing had to be had to be taken to us uh, they created a modular system like this what you see are small key keyholes wherein the other parts slide into this this has been 3d printed with supports the uh, sliding in this happens and it creates an entire round bracket this is just one part of it this entire set was then taken to us and they tested it over there i am not sure whether it was successful or unsuccessful but yes delivered it successfully 
uh, over here we have a bottle um, a company a bottling company came to us uh, uh, it seems that uh, some year uh, a year back when they ordered a new mold uh, for a bottle they when the bot when the mold came and they actually started production they realized that they had ordered for 250 ml water liquid container and the bottle itself was 250 ml whereas government stipulation says that it has to be 25% uh, more than the uh, than the actual quantity that it is supposed to hold and so they were forced to uh, rework on that mold and that cost them quite a bit so the next time that they were ordering the mold they came to us and they said ryan can you uh, create a 3d print so that we can test the design and they sent us a design we created a 3d print tested it they put liquid in it and tried it out uh, when everything was okay then they gave him the order for the mold now they spent about 1600 to make this bottle but they saved over 20000 in case that thing had gone wrong similarly we made a lot of enclosures this is one of my first projects that i got uh, this was a huge learning experience because there was no one to teach us at that time but this is um, um, a device which has got uh, a biometric scanner uh, basically for, uh, to put at all the entrances now the client would uh, before we did this they would do this on in aluminum this prototype would be done in aluminum and they would spend about 30000 for one set of, of aluminum what we did for these uh, with front and um, back and some parts in between and we gave it to them for less than 30000 rupees which means that it, it the, the the prototype for this parts actually came three times cheaper uh, which is commendable uh, similarly uh, someone wanted to create a gps uh, a gps device and we did this for them uh, there were a lot of other devices that did come to us and we've been able to help create these enclosures these enclosures have been actually uh, a very common thing that have been coming to us the uh, people come up with their ideas create the hardware for it but then to enclose to sell uh, you require a nice pretty looking enclosure and they came to us and uh, in some cases we helped them design in other cases they created their own stuff they came in with the designs and we uh, printed them and gave it to them uh, this is again a flywheel which was created for a company uh, they actually put this into a machine and tried it out here was an interesting project by uh, some interns they wanted to see whether generate electricity and the idea was to install this in pumps uh in uh, sorry uh, in pipes house pipes you have a you have water coming from the tank to your tap in the way you install something like this and uh, with that force of that water this uh, turbine turns around and it generates electricity that was the concept and uh, they did a lot of experiment we actually put in a battery and tried it out at a lower level but we could we, they did not take it off uh at uh, they did not take it up deeper and i would love if you can if anyone can do this. this is a very brilliant idea wherein uh, using the home water you can generate electricity the water that uh, that is generated that, that comes down from your tank uh, on the terrace to the tap on the ground floor uh, a gentleman came to us saying that uh, you know their client wants particular gift that they want to give as a token of appreciation to certain people and this is for grand hyatt uh, this is if if anyone has been there it's a mother and child and they wanted to make this in wax and give it to them and then we actually uh, when they uh, created the design uh, create 3d printed this and gave this as a model which they approved and then finally we made wax molds for them and gave it so that they could actually give the wax molds to them But this was a very interesting product uh, project took a lot of our time and energy uh, but it was quite fulfilling uh, at the end what are the immediate applications for 3d printing and where all can we use did you know that uh, a lot of your jewelry someone told me 90% someone told me uh, 80% but uh, i am quite confident that a lot of your jewelry today is being done using 3d printing Uh, what you see over here the blue one is actually a castable 
is 3 printed in castable resin. So what happens is that we take this castable resin, put it in plaster of Paris and heat it up. After some time, that entire uh, resin melts away, leaving no residue. And in that gold is then poured. And then you have this. Uh, these spikes are given for you to put in the uh, stones. So similarly, you have casts that are happening over here. But this is not just for jewelry. Even when you're doing casting of uh, metal, you can see over here, this is 3D printed mold that was made, a negative that was made. Then they created a mold in, uh, uh, in cement or in uh, plaster of Paris. And then they cast cold cast iron into this. Uh, this is the, this, these are the kind of opportunities that are available. And these are things that you can do right here at home itself. Uh, doesn't take a rocket science. Uh, what a lot of you will be surprised is, is this 3D printing bending metal. Uh, if you know press break, um, we have, I've actually seen a 3D printed punch and die bending metal pieces. And if you see over here, it starts from 0.6 mm till up till 3 mm. It is done bending for up till 3 mm metal. And you'll be surprised to know that uh, you can actually bend metal with plastic but i've seen this live and this is really impressive i couldn't wrap my head around it myself for myself and uh, this is quite impressive we can also make spare parts using 3d printing uh, there is a company that has come to us during the lockdown saying that um, we have a challenge because the supply chain has collapsed and the spare parts that we wanted we are not getting. Can you help us out in this? And they gave us a broken piece which we scanned, 3D printed and gave it back to them to try it out. Excuse me, worked. Uh, and that's the beauty of 3D printing again. Provided you have the right materials, you have someone who knows what is the kind of solution that is required, there's a lot that can be done in 3D printing. I mean, this slide itself is for me, uh, I still can't wrap my head around how plastic can bend metal. But if you know the right techniques, if, the, uh, if you know how to design it, you know how to uh, how to make use of the strength of uh, here you come up with an amazing solution. Gifting. Um, it's amazing how uh, how um, customized and how interesting uh, you can make or rather how gifting can be made using 3D printing. Um, what you see over here is actually my face. We scanned it, uh, 3D printed it, and then uh, put a plant into it. Then it's turned it into a pot. For Christmas, uh, a couple of years back, we made these various different pots of different shapes and designs and gifted it to our near and dear ones. I mean, how am I? Here is a here is a small celluloid uh, lighting fixture. Wherein you put lights, it gives a brilliant, um, lovely shadows along the wall. And we've made it in glow in the dark, use the dark filament. So when the light goes off, this thing uh, shines a brilliant green. Here again, a light lamp, night lamp, which is uh, which is called a lithophane, which is basically. Uh, uh, allows certain amount of light passing through and through that it it creates lovely pictures and uh, we have done this for a client wherein he's created an entire his family uh, pictures onto this light lamp uh, google had an event a few a couple of years back and for all their guests speakers we gave them this lithophane which is uh, which looks just plain and white when it is switched off but when it is switched on, it looks like this. We, it, all it needs is a photograph. Uh, today's challenge is not mass production, but mass customization. How do you customize for a number of people? How do you make gifts and, uh, uh, gifts and uh, toys and items for people uh, that are special and make them feel special? that has their name on it, has their face on it, that is so unique only, only to them. And 3D printing is one of the solutions that can help in mass customization. Uh, I, we very few, and at a very cost effective price. Some of the benefits of uh, 3D printing are that it is, uh, it reduces cost. 
uh, if you look at this enclosure over here just as an example uh, printing this project would not have gone live if it did not have an enclosure i mean how can you pitch uh, something with a circuit board and wire sticking out of it to any client or any customer even if it is an idea it needs something like this but making a making a container also is quite costly using 3d printing we can actually create a, a container or an enclosure that perfectly your uh, your circuit boards and if it's your requirement gives it an aesthetic look gives it a professional look and you can pitch it into your to your uh, uh, customers or you can uh, create your own device i know of people who have made their own uh, uh, own mini computers using this wherein they used a raspberry pi connected it to a uh, connected to a screen and then used a 3d printed enclosure around it i know people who have created a number of devices some to check blood some to check uh, uh, to 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 uh, transfer data so many things people have done when they used the 3d printed enclosure around this and this happens pretty regularly at our place where a lot of people do come in for these enclosures this next piece uh, 3d printing also helps in rapid prototyping rapid prototyping means you have the idea today by the end of uh, you have an idea in the morning and by the end of the day you can actually have a 3d printed part ready and uh, that's again the beauty of 3d printed your idea can be turned into reality and you can check it by the uh, next morning you have already changed and improved on the idea next evening you already have something new and that is um, that is the beauty of 3d printing i mean it works so fast uh, you can keep testing your ideas again you don't need to print the entire thing you can print just in part over here is actually a, a fixture and um, a fixture to hold something and join something uh, there is a company that i know that has completely reduced its costs 40 percent its fixturing cost by around 40 percent by using 3d printing instead of uh, aluminium they used to use uh, aluminium uh, material to create all their fixtures and now they're using 3d printed parts that reduces the cost considerably uh, 3d printing also reduces your risk a uh, risk in terms of your idea failing a uh, risk in terms of understanding where are the failure points before it fails uh, it helps you have a miniature gets a real life perspective of what your part will be what your product will be uh, you can create the part look at it in a miniature and say okay this is how it will look this is how it will feel maybe it is good for me maybe it is not 3d printing allows you to pre prepare very complex parts you know in the medical industry also there are some students there, there is some there is a, some doctors who wanted to operate on a girl it was a brain surgery rather than doing the operation directly on the surgery they 3d printed her skull uh, did a mock surgery on the skull first timed it and then they opened up her brain so that they were sure of what they're going to do similarly here there's a spine and they wanted a uh, fixture inside the spine uh, and they 3d printed it complex stuff like this can be done using 3d printing and that is because the uh, 3d printing also gives you the design flexibility like I said, complexity is free in this, and it helps you uh, boundaries which uh, before you could not cross. Uh, here are some examples that are of things that are happening around the world. Uh, I have got another 15 minutes, I guess. The, this is a company called Confed Confederate Motors, which manufactures some 60 or 70 of these bikes in a year. Um, and they say that it is possible only because of 3D printing. So 3D printing uh, using SLA parts, they do uh, high precision parts, uh, cast them directly and then mix. Uh, these are uh, uh, combat bikes and they, are, they look really awesome. You can, you can uh, look them up. They are an amazing, uh, they've got an amazing range of bikes. And this is possible only because of 3D printing. This complex design is possible because of 3D printing. Uh, when the when the lockdown happened and uh, the supply chain collapsed the, the uh, hospital in italy was facing huge difficulty because they they couldn't get respiratory valves 
the company which is manufacturing these valves also said, you know, we cannot do anything. The entire thing is locked down. We cannot supply it to you. That time, these two guys, Christian Prakasi and Alessandro Ramiali, uh, from, went went to the hospital, uh, took their 3D printer over there, designed, measured, and created 3D printed parts, uh, valves over there itself. They then went back tested it over there. They then went back home. And I think within 24 hours, they created about 100 of these revals for just under $1 each. That was a big slash in price. Um, there are contradictory uh, reports, but one report says that the respiratory valves were first putting some ten, cost, costing some 10,000 uh, US dollars. And uh, the guys manufactured it within $1, in just $1. This design was then replicated, uh, uh, shared for free, and a lot of people, a lot of other people, started making these valves in uh, to help other other countries as well. Uh, this is this is simply awesome. Uh, if your son asks you, "Can we print a car? Can we make a car?" You probably say, "What nonsense!" But um, uh, Sterling Bacchus and his son were doing a virtual drive on the Lamborghini and uh, the son asked his father, can we print one? And he says, okay. And guess what? They actually got together using a Creality CR10S uh, 3D printer. They 3D printed this entire car. And no, it is not just a model. It's a working car. It's an actual working car. They have used uh, uh, an engine of another car. I can't remember the name. Uh, they've used some parts of the Lam Lamborghini, they use some parts of body, and they have 3D printed most of this body and done. Now they've realized that the 3D printing would not sustain load. So they have 3D printed the part and then uh, did uh, carbon fiber covering over it. It has got, oh yes, there it is uh, on the screen. It has got a 5.7 liter uh, engine from a Chevy Corvée. Cor and uh, they have done uh, carbon fiber and uh, and encapsulation for this entire thing. Sorry about that. Uh, this is an amazing thing. You can it is still going on. It's still work in progress. You can just search for uh, 3D printed Lamborghini Aventador, and you will find this on Facebook. There's an actual page uh, devoted to this entire project. This is really really an inspiring and an interesting project. Uh, if you thought that 3D printing can't go big, then this is how big it can get. This is the world's first 3D printed neighborhood. It's a 152 square meter house. Uh, the house, the actual walls, took uh, 24 hours to print. And then in the next uh, 28 hours, I think they do the roof and the doors. Was, and the house was really beautiful. They have done about 50 of these houses. Uh, in this community, uh, and this is a project by a, by an organization called New Story, using uh, a 3D printer called the Vulcan 2. Uh, Icon is the company that has manufactured this 3D printer, and I think this is again another very inspiring story of how they have brought 3D printing to help people uh, in need. There was an earthquake in I think uh, in Mexico, and um, uh, and, and, and uh, the uh, owner or the founder of New Story was there and he was feeling very upset that there was nothing that could be done and nothing that could be done fast. And they developed, he started this community called uh, New Story and started this entire project. And if you think that 3D printing has not entered into the food industry, then you are wrong. Uh, this is a, a organization that, uh, this is a company called Food Inc. They've got around uh, seven restaurants across the world in Barcelona, uh, Leda, London, Netherlands. The entire food, the entire menu is 3D printed. Uh, it's pretty expensive. It comes to about $250 for a meal, for a full nine course meal. But I mean, you cannot beat the experience. You are one of the first guys to, to try something like this. Everything is 3D printed, including the vessels that they serve in, including the furniture that they are sitting on. Uh, every single thing is 3D printed and that makes uh, it so much interesting and uh, fun. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have any questions for me, I think this is the time to ask. Uh, I've gone a little bit fast, 
but I can go back to the screens and show you some more if you have. Uh, I open the floor for questions. So if you're there, you can take on or anyone can straight away ask me the questions if you have it. Yeah, sure. Uh, participants can unmute uh, themselves and they can, uh, uh, they can ask the questions or they can put it in the chat box and then we can reply it back. Yes, you can ask me the questions if you have any. Please go ahead. Okay, so I've got a question. Uh, uh, he says, what is the bigger advantage of 3D printed punch and die over the regular? Uh, in prototyping, so we are doing a project right now for my um, in itself. Let, let me give you an example. For my machines itself, we have a sharp edge, sharp corners. But I did not want sharp corners. I wanted uh, rounded corners of a particular diameter. Those rounded corner dies are not easily available. And for a short uh, quantity of uh, production, it doesn't make sense. Uh, it doesn't make uh, economical sense. So the best advantage, the best option that time is to 3D print a, a punch and die and use it. Uh, the from when when I last checked, my company told me that they manufacture around 10,000 pieces using this particular ton, uh, punch and. It's a very good question. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, doctor, hello. Well, the motive behind the entire session. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, tell doctor, me. If our, yeah, if a student wants to learn this uh, 3D printing, where can he get it or uh, training? Uh, we have not, uh, uh, before the lockdown, we were having workshops, but now we have not yet started workshops. So we, in Goa, so we are doing, and I think there is someone in Don Bosco also who is doing uh, uh, this workshop, but I think after the lockdown, none of us have started. Um, oh, you can right. like our Facebook page, but I think we are starting an online, uh, online workshop very soon, wherein you can sit at home and uh, run the 3D printer. So we are working on that system. Uh, probably by the mid of October, we will have this thing ready. Uh, we are trying to look at a system. See, see, 3D printing is all about experiential learning. If you don't experience it, how can you learn? I cannot give you all um, uh, all theory and, and, and leave it at that. So we wanted people to actually print. And the way that we are doing it is that we have connected our printers with uh, cameras and, and uh, stuff. And I'm trying to see how we are going to give you access to directly log in, print, and uh, look at your product. Of course, to pick it up, you'll have to come over. Yeah, and also uh, adding to the same discussion. So we also have a prototyping lab at uh, Goa State Innovation Council, which is uh, at the Don Bosco College of Engineering. Uh, if there are any individual projects or individual tasks that has to be 3D printed or need any mentorship support, so the lab is available for people to come and use it. And as Ryan has already uh, mentioned that uh, we are planning to come up with an initiative where the 3D printer will be shared online. So, so yes, we are working on that and uh, those will be a little more technical and more focus oriented sessions. So right now we are doing more of our awareness session, but yes. it, uh, it was the right question and uh, we will uh, we will definitely are looking into it. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Yeah, so Prithik has asked me, can the material resist high temperatures? Prithik, um, every material that is being 3D printed is for a uh, different reason. As in, uh, you have uh, materials for high temperature, you have ma materials to resist high pressure, you have materials to last long, and you have materials that dissolve in water also. So for different applications, you have different type of materials. We have high temperature materials as well. We have a material called uh, Delrin. Now when I say we have, I mean 3D printing. Uh, we have a material called Delrin, which uh, we can directly use in an injection mold to do injection molding. So that takes a lot of temp uh, heat, high temperature as well as high pressure. I hope that answers your question. See, the entire, uh, uh, the entire uh, purpose of this is to excite you into trying to use 3D printing. Uh, 3D, use 3D printing at your home or at your work, for your business or for your pleasure, for your hobby or to make money. But use 3D printing. It doesn't really cost much. And once you start with it, 
that's when you kick start the entire process and i've seen people who have uh, done our workshop have come up with some amazing ideas uh, it's always exciting for me to see this uh, people coming up with these ideas and uh, bringing their ideas to life uh, we can't share names we can't share um, most a lot of what we, what they do uh, what i've shared on my uh, powerpoint presentation is hardly 2% or 3% of what we actually do because we sign ndas non disclosure agreements with all our customers so we can't really show what we what we do to pe other people um however um i must impress upon the fact that we do a lot of work which is very exciting and uh, when you come up with ideas and you come and show us uh, it's only then that you will actually see how it can help you Nishant Surlekar is asking me, "Can we do we require an app for 3D printing? Uh, uh, for designing? Okay. So for designing, you can use any of the designing softwares that are available. It doesn't matter. I for youngsters was uh, non-complex designs. I normally recommend SketchUp. For more complex, there is uh, uh, this online one. What is that called? So there are SolidWorks. There is AutoCAD." there are uh, so many different uh, fusion 360 which is online and which can do uh, complex designs there is on shape which you can use which is again for free uh, you can use all these uh, softwares and do just export it as a dot stl file can any material be used for 3d printing no there is a certain set of materials which will be used for 3d printing we do have a wide range of materials that can be 3d printed which includes gold silver titanium um, brass uh, which also includes stainless steel we we are i've seen silicon printing i've seen nylon i've seen uh, different types of plastics and polymers that are being 3d printed um, but not any and every material can be 3d printed it depends upon what is ready right now or you look at the nearest alternative okay what do you think prototype mod uh, do, uh, what do you think of prototype modeling as a skill for young kids and students so I have, uh, I'll put this in perspective for you. Many years back when I was passed out school, we had to go for uh, an actual workshop or other course on Word and Excel. Today, students who are coming out of uh, school are already using Word and Excel as a, as a norm. And this is exactly what is going to happen for 3D designing. And one of the, uh, one of the indicators of this is those who have Windows 10 will see that uh, Windows has already put in a software called 3D Builder in it. And they've got also 3D Paint in it. There are th systems that are, uh, uh, Autodesk has been buying software left, right and center. Uh, trust me, 3D printing is, uh, sorry, 3D designing, not just printing, is going to be an essential skill in the years to come. It's It will be smart to start adopting it right now. My uh, boys, 12 year now they're 12 and, and nine, but when they were six and eight, they've been doing designing since then. It is that simple and that easy. They've been doing designing on SketchUp. Okay, another question is what, uh, okay, how soon can we look at 3D printing as an household option? As uh, Ian, uh, it is already economically feasible, uh, feasible and it is as soon as you can take it home. Uh, I'm telling you the same thing, 3D printing, you can, you can have a 3D printing at home for hardly uh, 17 or 18,000 rupees today and a very good printer. I mean, the printer that you're seeing on the screen that is printing over there is costing hardly 19,000 rupees. Um, my uh, my uh, offer to you is that if you see the price on Amazon, you come and tell me that and I'll give you the same price plus I'll give you one spool free. I'm not trying to sell my machine. I'm trying to tell you that uh, 3D printing is something that you should start working on very fast. Don't waste time. If you find it uh, that 18, 19,000 is expensive, four of you will get together. It is then just 5,000 rupees. Get together and have four of you all get together and start um, using 3D printing. Uh, get together as a team, at the, as a group and start printing. How, how much does a 3D printer cost? I already answered that, but it starts from uh, anywhere from 18 to 19,000 and goes up to four and a half to five, five crores, depending upon your application. Can a 3D printed object 
uh, survive in space. Uh, in fact, right now, uh, there are already 3D printed objects that have gone into space. Uh, more so, there is some 14 year old from uh, India who has printed something and sent it out to, into space. Uh, if you look that up from Hyderabad, one boy has done that. So that, I, that kind of answers the question. Can we make a human portrait with fine details? So, so we there are three ways you can do this. One is that something called digital sculpting, wherein you take softwares like sculpting, uh, sculptress. Uh, then there is a software called uh, uh, ZBrush. Okay, and then also Blender, and you can start sculpting uh, a, a human image, and with whatever details you put over there, you can 3D print it. Uh, you can get as much details as you want depending upon the size and uh, scale that you're printing it in. Sharvari, can any material be used to 3D print? Uh, Sharvari, we already uh, answered these questions. There are a number of uh, materials that are available, but uh, uh, not all can be 3D printable. We've got a wide range of materials that can be 3D printed. And uh, there is a material called PA, polylactic acid, which is a biodegradable uh, plastic. Normally, PLA is made out of, uh, normally plastic is made out of uh, petroleum, but uh, PLA is made out of cornstarch. Now, this material can be used to, uh, so this is a biodegradable plastic, but it has come with so many variants today that you don't need other plastics. I mean, you have, um, you have, plastics in in all this candy colors we have uh, plastics in all the uh, different materials like silk we have it in wood filament we have got carbon fiber we've got glow in the dark there are so many different marble finish uh, stone finish so many materials we have it's a wide range you have to just come and see choose what you want and uh, use it any other questions Royston, a nice question again. Can more about food printing? Does it taste the same? And uh, is the food material used used to print? Yes, Royston, it is food material that is used to print. In fact, um, NASA spent about three million, uh, about three million, about four or five years back, 2014, if I'm not mistaken, to make the world's first uh, pizza printer. Uh, thereafter, uh, 3D Systems made a machine called the Chef Jet Pro, which started 3D printing in icing sugar. And uh, I could take a 3D model of you and I could print the entire thing in uh, paper with the same colors. And each color would have the same flavor. It would have a different flavor. So, for example, if you have uh, your face was brown, it would taste of chocolate. And if you had a bag that was green, it would taste of maybe green apple. And if you had a, some, a pan that was purple, that would probably be grape or uh, berry or something like that. So um, food printing is quite dominant. Most popular is chocolate printing. The restaurant that is uh, the restaurant that I was talking about fooding, they are making various types of foods uh, in the form of pastes. Now that's this for now. That is the only constraint that everything that needs to be printed has to be printed in the form of paste. Then they are maybe cooked or hardened and then eaten up. Very interesting question, Royston. Keep the questions coming. So there are almost five years which we are trying to give it to you in 45 minutes. Sometimes I go too fast. Sometimes uh, I get lost in, uh, in the passion of the moment. So do let me know if you uh, have any more questions that you have. Can we use leader scan objects in 3D printing? I didn't understand what is leader scan objects, Pratik. Um, okay, so I, I'm not I'm not familiar with leader, uh, Pratik. But you can use 3D scanned objects for 3D printing. So basically, you take a we have a 3D scanner. And you scan the uh, scan the object, and then you can use it for 3D printing. I am sorry, I do not know what leader is, and I think I will have to uh, try to check it out myself. It's very interesting. Thank you for that question. Uh, a good 3D printer name, obviously my 3D printers. <laughs> so, so um, if you look right down, there is a list of 3D printer companies that I represent. 
and I'm very particular about the companies that I represent because uh, uh, I don't want any negative publicity out of this. So anyway, it depends all on your application and we can help you uh, choose the right printer as per your application. And, and, and the right printer is not always the expensive one. Sometimes the right printer is, is uh, quite cost effective. Thank you for that question, uh, Nemesio. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, sir, doctor, uh, what about the repair yes. and maintenance of the printer if we buy it? I have, uh, we have around 17 printers uh, with us. We really don't face much of an issue. However, if you do face an issue, I've got a very efficient team sitting here in, uh, uh, in the office and uh, they will help you sort it out. Uh, again, 3D printing is not complex at all. Uh, a lot of your resources are available online. Uh, any of your engineers, I don't know uh, if you are into the engineering field, but any of the engineers will be simply able to manufacture or repair your 3D printers. Anyone with a um, slight technical bend will be able to handle it. However, if you face any difficulty, we are there to support you. I mean, we've been supporting, I think we have around 100 plus clients in Goa and we've been supporting them and we've not faced any issues. Thank you, Doctor. Do you have anything to say about 3D pancake makers, about time, etc.? I am not really uh, too sure about 3D pancake makers, uh, but I do know. See, it, it all depends upon what you are extruding and uh, how long it takes to solidify. But um, honestly, Rajan, I don't know much about 3D pancake, pancake makers. I know you are interested in food printing, uh, but food printing again is so what we could do is that I could actually do a session on food printing where I could cover up different aspects of food printing. Uh, Sudeep is very much interested in covering all these different aspects in a different webinars. So maybe we could do that. So one, one day we could do something in jewelry and some one day and something in, uh, uh, in wax printing. One day we could do in chocolate printing. Okay. Yes. So we can do, we can do that. That's a one day I can do in food printing also. In fact, uh, after this, there are different ways where three D printer can use three uh, D printing can can be used in uh, food production. In fact, after this session, we are going to share a feedback form, and we are also planning to conduct a series of webinars and seminars, uh, especially on three D printing. So maybe if anybody has any topic of interest, you can always uh, give us a feedback, and then we'll try to include in our curriculum. And my number is here. You can always uh, WhatsApp me also in case you have any difficulty and you are being shy to ask it on the on the chat or in the public forum. You can always uh, share it with me. Can we use different colors in one object? Uh, it, it depends upon the technology that you are using, Pritik. If you are using an FDM technology or the FFF technology, the number of nozzles determines the number of uh, colors that you can print. If you are using SLS technology, uh, you can use just one uh, one color. However, there are technologies like the MJP uh, and uh, others which um, can use multiple colors as well as multiple materials in the same type. There is a machine called the uh, there's called Project, I think, Project something that can print seven different colors in seven different objects. Yeah, so seven different materials. I'm, I'm not too, I can't, I can't recollect the name of the machine but there are machines that can do that it, yeah do you need a computer to design yes you do sonam request you to include 3d printing in the curriculum in the schools explaining 3d printing type material and working uh, well this is uh, very interesting we we ourselves have been campaigning for something like this and uh, nothing to do with what i am doing but uh, the uh, Niti Aayog, that is uh, Government of India, has already floated a scheme called the Atal Tinkering Lab Scheme. And if any of your schools do not yet have this, you can ask your schools to apply for it. Uh, the Atal Tinkering Lab basically gives about uh, 12 lakhs to the school to set up a lab wherein uh, 3D printers, robotics kits, IoT kits, laptops, 
uh, drill machines, cutting machines are provided, and any student can go there and start working on these machines. Yeah. So um, if your school does not have an ATL lab, please uh, ask your principal to start uh, a principal or headmaster or manager to start applying for one. A lot of the schools are already getting this, so make use of it. I think around 20, 19 or 18 or 19 schools in Goa already have these. Kaushik uh, asked me which 3D printer is the best option to start for product development at beginner level. Uh, again, I think um, it's very unfair of me to, uh, to say this in the public forum, but if you come to us and we will guide you. Because when you're talking at, uh, see beginner level also is a, is a uh, subjective term and uh, product development also is a subjective term. You are looking at product development in a particular view. Somebody else looks at product development in a different view. So let's uh, have a conversation on this. You, my number is there. We can get in touch and work on it. Is 3D printing used in making a rocket? Uh, just today, I got an uh, uh, to today I got a message uh, on my group, on my 3D printing group, saying that uh, someone has used 3D printing in the entire functional rocket. Maybe you do a search and you will get the answer. Roy, viable and do not have a lot more economical, a lot more viable, uh, again, depending on the application. And it is environment friendly, depending on the application. So we're using a material called PLA, which is a biodegradable plastic. So that is one way you can say that it is uh, environmental friendly secondly the amount of wastage uh, let's say i am doing a statue of my face a model of my face the traditional method would require me to create a uh, take a block and then chip it out and all that is waste whereas 3d printing starts with zero so the wastage is hardly uh, 0.1 0.2 something like that or maybe one percent or two percent uh, than than the normal so the wastage is reduced also, the material that is used, a lot of it is um, biodegradable. Can a special child handle it without much hazard? Just asking because then it will be great to help my special children. So you may not, uh, the special child, uh, I'm not sure until I understand, um, understand their uh, level of, uh, their level of understanding or, yeah, their level of understanding or maturity. Um, Small kids have used the 3D printer. I mean, I told you my my eight when my when my sons were eight year old and six year old, they have used it. So uh, they're pretty safe. There's no nothing harmful in it as such. So you, maybe they could use. But for special children with special needs, uh, I would love to work with you if there is any specific requirement that you have. Uh, please get in touch with us and we will see how we can work for your kids. Ronan Barreto. Can we have a workshop for school kids interested in taking up 3D printing as a business? I would love to run it. We, uh, before the lockdown and in the years uh, before that, I think I've lost count on the number of workshops we have done for schools and colleges. Um, almost every month we were doing uh, four or five of these workshops. Sometimes in a day we were doing three or four. I'll be happy to do these workshops. Now let's find a way of getting it done. Keep in touch with me. And uh, just said, ping me and, and we'll see how we can do this. I'll be happy to do it. What is the price of 3D printer? Again, it starts from 70 to 18,000 and can go uh, up to go back in crores, seven, eight crores, depending upon your budget and your application. Thank you, Roy. Anyone else? I love the questions that are coming. It shows a lot of interest and it shows that uh, uh, your interest is peaked. So that's good. Uh, I hope we are able to use this to help you make money. I would love you to start start 3D printing business. And I'm willing to help you do that if anyone is interested. So those who are interested in the workshop, you can ping me and I'll tell someone, somebody from my staff to uh, create a database and, and store it so that when we're having the workshop, we will give you first preference. Also, you can like us on Facebook. Uh, so that uh, whenever we have the workshop, we usually post it on Facebook and uh, you can uh, pick it up from there, immediately apply for it from there. Does a 3D printer use a lot of electricity? Not at all. 
uh, in fact it uses as much as your computer does uh, or as much as your laptop does and in many cases sometimes less than your laptop as a nishant uh, special child means uh, the child would be about 50 to 60 iq i honestly i wouldn't be able to gauge on this uh, so let's take it offline and uh, we'll see what we can do i'll be happy to help yeah anyone else any other questions you can feel free to unmute yourself and ask very interesting questions coming in and some of them are pretty unique i've never faced these questions before doctor nice. suppose uh, excuse me doctor uh, yes, suppose yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah we want certain models to be made uh, so that we can teach our child okay. our students in school could we place them with you and get yes. it done during vacation probably yes. we could send our students there uh, yes 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 under you your can guidance. Do it. so, so sarojini uh, first first off i am not a doctor uh, my name is okay, ryan sorry, sorry. just ryan Okay. No worries. Secondly, uh, which school are you from, Sir Rajini? Utkarsh High School, Rivana. Where is that? Rivon, Rivona. Sange. Rivon. Yeah. Sange. Okay. Sange. All right. So, uh, Sir Rajini, we uh, we are very open to uh, an internship program, which we uh, very often do. As long as, so I'm I'm open for an internship program around a year, uh, as as long as the number of students do not uh, cross. Four in the in, in my premise, so we don't have more than four people in my premises. Um, so uh, if you want to send a, someone for an internship program, we'll be happy to post them. They don't have to pay anything, and we can start with that. Um, the other thing you said about uh, printing printing parts, you can send them for students of schools. We have a very special discount wherein we charge them some forty percent less uh, of the normal prices. Um, but uh, if, but for you and for schools like you, we will uh, we will work out something else. Don't worry about it. Price is not the main constraint. Show me your interest. Yes. Sir. Then we will see. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. We'll be happy to go away, uh, out of our way for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Are 3D pens good for beginners? Fabio 3D uh, Fabio Sequera is our, our 3D pens good for beginners, and it's absolutely. Um, uh, what do you call that? Delightful to use 3D pens. Uh, one of my biggest stress busters is using a 3D pen. Uh, whenever I'm stressed out, I go and start uh, doing this. Of late, I have not used it. But uh, if there is a holiday and we are going home or I'm going somewhere uh, out on a holiday, I make sure I take a 3D pen and a few filaments along with me. And uh, for any, any beginner, for them to understand the concept of 3D printing, for them to answer the... For them to start spatial thinking, for them to start thinking in 3D, for them to learn welding, joining, fixing. Uh, the 3D pen is amazing. Uh, we have 3D pens and it's, uh, I mean, I cannot talk enough about how good it is. And, and uh, students as young as six years and seven years can start using a 3D pen. But what I've seen is more than the, 3D, more than the students, the, when the parents see it and they, they get hooked onto it and uh, they start using it more than the, uh, more than the students. Yeah. Can we design on phone or do we need computer? If there is an app that can help you design easily on phone, go ahead and uh, design. As long as the design is created and can be, expo uh, can be um, exported in a .stl file. Where do we apply for the innovation lab skill for school? For so you look up uh, Niti Ayo, Atal Tinkering Labs. Sir, the house you showed, are they disaster safe? Can they protect from the wild? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, these houses have been created in... Uh, uh, in earthquake areas, uh, I met someone some a year back, someone from Kolkata who has already worked on these houses, and he told me that they have tested the houses in Japan. They have done various types of uh, testing on it, including your weather testing and uh, your stress testing, and they have done destructive testing to see where it does, and it is a very good option for refugee houses. Should we educate kids and children regarding 3D printer? Yes, Roy, you must include 3D printing as part of your activities uh, for kids. 
uh, it uh, not not only does it help them uh, improve their thinking and uh, and their creativity it also helps them start thinking differently um, with all due respect uh, schools teachers to think in one particular track whereas uh, 3d printing is one of those 3d printing 3d pen is one of those uh, avenues which help them think differently so i would strongly recommend